right, so um, first things first, go ahead and introduce yourselves to the crowd because we have people coming from all over and just share with them how long you've been in the business, you know, how did you get into business, kind of brief little, you know, one minute, two minute kind of story, give them a little background. Go ahead, we'll start on start the end me. and work check, your check. way towards me. Hello everyone, Russell, I'm from Northern California. <clears throat> I was in the corporate world for a long time. Uh, my education's in financial economics, in real estate uh, as a professional for a very short period of time, but I've been doing investing and lending for a long time. Tom Daves, actually been in the real estate business 45 years. Started in uh, 1977. I really don't claim that very much. Right. I, I, I always go like over 35 years, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, been in the real estate business and um, just love it, enjoy it, have a lot of fun. So thanks. On that note, real quick, my parents have been brokers 49 years, but they said I have to cap it at 49 because it makes them sound too old, right? So, I, I, yeah, I started real estate before you all were born. So, <laughs> there you go. Almost. Anyway, and so Deb Britton, and been in real estate about 10 years now. My background was actually in the ministry, had no intention to go sell some houses, but here I am. Um, ran the number one team out of Northwest Louisiana, had a lot of fun um, doing a lot of production there, got tired, and came to California. Yay. Hi, I'm Stephanie Peck, and I am the owner of Peck's Realty Group out of uh, just outside of Portland, Oregon. And I, I've been in real estate for 16 years. I got started because my husband and I were getting ready to start a family and I knew that I didn't want to drop my kids off at daycare for 10 hours a day. My only goal was to put $10,000 in the bank. So I thought, well, I'll sell some homes and see where it goes. And now I'm sitting here. <laughs> and how many deals a year do you do now? I did 93 transactions Just last year. Just 93. All right. And Russell, what was it, 80 plus for you? 80 the last 12 months. 80 the last 12 months. Don, or, uh, Tom? Uh, 150. 150 plus, yeah, and Deb? I can beat Tom. I did 168 as a single agent before I had a team, and like I said, now I'm tired. I moved to California, and we took that way down, y'all. <laughs> I did 60. <laughs> That's awesome, man. By, by myself, solo agent, no, no help, no. Uh, been in business for about six years. Uh, uh, was lending for six months. I wanted to find a job where I could golf and somehow make money. Luckily, real estate took off. My golfing career did not, but uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyways, I've just, I've just, uh, I've had some success. Um, you know, I'm learning, constantly learning, trying to improve. And uh, I guess I'm, I'm doing all right. I didn't know I was gonna be on the panel till about five minutes ago, but That's I'll right. try to give some insight. So uh, grateful to be here. Awesome. Well, keep the microphone. So we're going to get into some, you know, deeper stuff because I want to provide value for all of you here. But let's let's start out kind of basic. So walk us through your daily routine. Like what time do you get? Do you go to an office? Do you work from your home office? Do you work at an office? What time does it start? What do you start with? Do you have a daily method of operation? I call it a D DMO. Um, yeah, currently I just got an office. I'm starting a team. So I wake up at about 5.30 and then from 6.30 to 7.30, I, I'm involved with the youth of my church in the mornings. And then afterwards, I get to the office about 8 and then I start my day. Uh, I want to prospect, but I'm mostly trying to catch up with uh, current deals. Um, you know, but day starts at 8 and I notice when I'm at the office, I am more productive than anywhere else. So I just will start start calling on leads, just talking to as many people as I can. Okay. And don't you have a little one? Yeah. Not, how old? One year old. Yeah. So probably having an office away from the that office makes has it a helped easier. tremendously yeah, I since imagine. I had the baby, for sure. <laughs> yes. Um, so the question was, how many hours a day do you call? Right? Do I do I call? Prospect. Prospect. Yeah. I, I I'm just constantly. I mean, I need to be better at putting a. Uh, time on it, but I'm just throughout the day, I am constantly either following up with current leads, talking to um, whoever I'm in escrow. I need to be better. I think one thing I can improve in my business is setting two hours. I want to do two hours a day in the morning from eight to 10 and uh, prospect. So there you go. Yep. All right, Stephanie. 
what my daily what does your day look like? like what time do you get up what do you yeah. do in the morning before work <laughs> you know what like you know okay. those sort of things and then what does it look like when you got your business hat on and you're starting work well my daily routine now is awesome because I retired my husband. So nice. I have a stay at home dad now. <laughs> so it's great. Uh, but before that it was you know, the chaos of getting the kids ready for school, dropping them off and trying to fit an entire day's work in about six hours time while they were at school. <laughs> uh, so that's opened up now. And I, I don't have a set time for prospect or lead gen. I organically prospect 24 seven. Every person that I talk to is a prospect. I show up like a realtor in everything that I do. I've managed to work real estate into every conversation. If I'm getting coffee and they ask, what are you up to today? Even if I'm not doing real estate, I'm going to tell them that I'm doing something real estate. And those are the times that are lead gen for me. I organically lead gen with every conversation. I love it. All right. Deb Britton. This you're, is an early, you're an early riser, I know. Oh, yeah, I get, get up real going. early, like, you know, <laughs> 9 a.m. feels good to me. Um, no, <laughs> I, no, I don't get up early. I don't get up early for anybody. And um, but, I, but I'll work till midnight all day, every day. That's so that's not a big deal. And um, but anyway, I am a, I'm a squirrel. And so I know what I'm supposed to do. And I know what I teach my agents to do. And I don't do any of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I very much organically lead generate. If the bottom line is if I, if I don't already have somebody that is on my list, in other words, I wake up on a Monday morning, I go, what three contracts, either three buyers or three listings am I taking this week? That's the question I ask myself. And if I can't answer that question with three people that I can go make something happen for, then I'm getting in my database and I'm picking up the phone and I'm going to have in about 20 minutes, that's about how long it takes me, I'll have somebody hot and ready to go. And so that's my MO is I'll always have enough in the funnel that I can go pick something up. And if I don't, 20 minutes in the database and then I've got somebody. Awesome. So... I've always been an early riser. Ever since I was a little kid, I had a paper route. So I get up right around five o'clock, no alarm. I just wake up at five and I do the cold plunge. Who do, who's done the cold plunge? Yeah, wow. it's great, you know? And it's like Tony Robbins says, don't negotiate, just do it. And that really helps with other things that you have to do. You don't negotiate, you just go do it. So I start off with a cold plunge and then I do some groundwork. Any of you ever heard of Gary Brecca? Yeah, Gary Brecca, yeah. I walk on the grass a little bit and I do my breath work. It sounds crazy, voodoo, whatever, I love it. It just gets things started. And then uh, drink 18 ounces of water, get some coffee going. And then I have, uh, read my Bible, have my quiet time, I pray, hmm. um, and, then I, um, and then I work out. And then I turn on my phone. How many of you turn on the phone right away, first thing, as soon as you get up? Stop it! Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and then I hang out with the family. I have a 15-year-old daughter. She goes to high school. I take her up to high school in Colfax. And then I get to the office. It's usually about 6 o'clock by then. No. Anyway. <laughs> uh, usually get to the office around 8.30. And then um, we have a huddle. And then I do three hours of lead generation. And then I make a mess in the morning, clean it up in the afternoon. There you go. Awesome. I'm uh, very similar to everybody else. My beautiful wife, Pamela's in the back. She loves my 5 a.m. alarm every single morning. My phone is on. <laughs> That's what wakes both of us up. Uh, she does not wake up. Uh, I just wake up. I go to the gym, work out, run, uh, and then head to work. I'm usually work by 8.30. Every day is a little different. It's all time blocked. It's whether I'm doing recruiting or lead generation, and then in the evenings and afternoons and on the weekends, I coach girls softball. Okay, so awesome starting uh, with you, Russell. You guys mentioned database and these sort of things. I'd love to hear what, uh, what is your database? Is it old school Excel spreadsheet? Do you have KV Core? Is it follow-up boss? Like, do you, or do you not have one? Is it your phone? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, of course I use KV Core. I'm with uh, EXP. I'll tell you a story. I had a team at Keller Williams and I had a system called command. Anybody that's ever been uh, at Keller Williams and wants to kill whoever invented <laughs> command, uh, join my team. I worked on command for four or five months. I was a brand new agent. I read the millionaire real estate agent, you know, book, your, your database is your business. 
and I am killing myself trying to get command to work. And Beverly Steiner, who's a super smart yeah. uh, businesswoman, anybody that knows Beverly, she's like, Russell. I said, what? She's like, it doesn't work. <laughs> I, was, I was new in real estate. I didn't know any better. I thought this is what a CRM was supposed to do is frustrate you every day, be on uh, you know, customer support every day. She's like, go out and find a real one. So uh, my assistant and I at that time, Alex, went out, looked and looked and looked. And we had it narrowed down between a one called conversion and one called, uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter anymore. So we decided conversion, but conversion you couldn't do as a single or as a team. And so conversions team version was KV Core. So yeah. I was paying $799 a month at Keller Williams for KV Core before I came over to EXP. And I found out it was included for 85 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so it took me about six or seven seconds to call and cancel my $799 a month uh, team version. I do have this solo version now. So our team has to kind of work together because I can't divvy out leads the same. However, I can still feed them the same as I did before through KV Core to those other people. So I use KV Core every day. Pretty exclusively. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, you have to remember when I started in real estate back in 1977, it was like, here's your desk, here's your phone, good luck, you're on your own, right? <laughs> so my CRM a was a three by five card. So went from the three by five, then went to the Excel spreadsheet and then had E-Edge, Keller Williams, and then Command, went to Boomtown, then went to KV Core. Now I'm using Follow Up Boss. Follow Up Boss is great. And our mantra is if it's not in follow-up boss, it doesn't exist. And really, your database is really your only tangible asset that you have in real estate, right? Mm -hmm. um, because and in real estate, you know, it's our book of business. And it's the clients that we can serve and help and stay in touch with. So it's my story. I love it. I hate technology, and so it was all about finding something that I was actually going to use. That was the challenge. I knew it needed to be in there. I knew my money was going to be in there, and it is in there. I did end up finding Follow Up Boss early on, thank God, and um, and used it consistently. I then ended up finding something called Boomtown and ended up connecting my website to it. So even when I switched over to EXP, I did hold on to my Boomtown site, but I'm in the but what I also did was set up all of my attraction recruiting back into follow-up boss because follow-up boss is just so easy especially if you've got agents you're raising up a team kv core is phenomenal and again it's free essentially um, but if you want something else that's a very low investment follow-up boss is a dream and it's so easy to use so yes i love my boomtown and i love my follow-up boss well, I am also a reformed command user <laughs> <laughs> and excited to dive into KV Core, which I haven't done yet. Uh, but I would also say on top of that, social media is my database. I'm not going to lie. That is where I most connect with people and direct messaging, commenting. I mean, I spend intentional time on social media. So when it's connecting with my database, usually that's where I'm going to find people. It's interesting, they don't respond, you know, you leave them a message, they don't call you back, you send them a text, they won't text you back. But if you like their posts and you say something about how, how cute their kids are, they'll engage with you. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. There's a little uh, pro tip for you. You should be engaging with your, with your people on social media, right? So. Um, I've never really been a systems guy, so I've just, um, it's one thing I've noticed when I came over to EXP, I started a boutique firm. I didn't know what a CRM was. I didn't know what a transaction coordinator was. I had no training. In fact, we printed out our files and hole punched and put it into a filing cabinet. And so when I came over to EXP, my eyes were wide open. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But I, I was already busy enough where after, after the day of showing homes and getting escrows, I didn't want to work on a dang database. But now I'm seeing the, the value of it. And I've partnered up with a company that Tom recommended. Uh, they're, they're called Bullseye out of Sacramento. And uh, they are using Chime and they are managing my whole database for me uh, because I figured if I'm not you know, I'm willing to put in the time to do certain stuff. I need to partner up with people that can uh, help leverage my business. And that's something I'm trying to execute on currently. I love it. All right. So 
You got to have, you know, these contacts. You got to get the contacts and put them in your database, right? So one of the number one questions that you all had in checking in was, what are your lead generation sources? Like, how are you getting le these leads? How are you connecting with people? You know, taking them from a, an unmet to a met to contract to close, et cetera. So we'll start with you. Um, what are your lead generation sources? Uh, and, and I would guess you guys probably have more than one. So go ahead and kind of list them all out and we can unpack them a little bit. Okay, so um, I started early on uh, with Zillow, love them, hate them. I was getting about a 6X return uh, with Zillow. Then I, I went to realtor.com and I found, a, I found that I was working pretty well with um, online leads. But as this market, um, as we're in a changing market, I'm noticing that the return is down. I'm still getting a return on online leads. Um, but bottom line, I think we have to work harder as agents. Um, so I am, I am now focused on prospecting uh, FISBOs and expireds because listings, we can leverage our time and, and create more leads out of listings. So I, I think it's good to have multiple sources. I, I've been working on a contractor for a couple of years. I just, I just landed him and we're starting to list his home. So um, I, I think as, it, as, as if you want to become wealthy, right, we need multiple streams of income. I think we need multiple streams of leads. Um, go with what you guys are good with. I, I happen to have a good niche with working online leads. I'm fast to meet with them. I have a good conversion rate, but that just works for me. I think everyone in here is, is probably built a little different. And I would just figure out uh, what you're good at, S stick with that. And if you want to, uh, you know, expand, then figure out what that is. But there's multiple, multiple, multiple opportunities around us. I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do this. Yeah. Because there isn't just one way in real estate to be successful. And this is great. Terrible at online leads. So I work by referral relationship and reputation. And I started that through social media, through community groups on Facebook and showed up in those community groups and met everybody in town. I looked to see who the influencers were, who were the business owners that everyone was recommending consistently. And I got in relationship with them, uh, the nonprofits that people love to support. And I started supporting them and I volunteered and I showed my face at everything they were doing. So I became a community advocate and became just the girl that everybody knows as the realtor in my town, people call me and I say, you know, who could I thank for the referral? Or how did you find out about Peck's Realty Group? And they say, I don't know. I just see your face everywhere. So that was mission accomplished for me. That's awesome. So one might say that you were focused on uh, looking upstream little plug for you might Mr. say that Stoddard, right <laughs> i've never heard that our term, speaker but... <laughs> later you'll, you guys if you don't know what we're talking about upstream you'll learn in a little bit here i'm sure so yeah, yeah. i look i looked for the people that knew the people that's right that's that's how i did it and then i learned the upstream model and became even better about looking for the right people with different intentions instead of just looking for the people that knew everybody, which that definitely still works. But then now looking for the people that know who's going to be making moves. That's right. The influencers uh, in that regard. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Deb Britton. So I had a little bit of an evolution in how I did that whole lead gen thing. So I started with the clients that nobody else wanted to work with. You know, they're trash because uh, I love making things happen and tell me no and I'm going to show you yes. <laughs> and um, so I had fun with that for a while and that led to a very transactional business. I did start buying leads. I did the Zilla thing, did the realtor.com thing and had a lot of success there. It was wonderful and was able to build my business and ramp it up very quickly and provide leads for my team very quickly. I had an intention though when I started to transition my business to California that I didn't want to do that anymore. I don't like donating money to these other people. And so I wanted to build a relationship business. So I took a bunch of stuff from your playbook, sister, and, um, and began to um, work my community. I mean, like sincerely work on my community. Because guess what, guys? If you're not taking care of that person, some other idiot agent that doesn't know what they're doing is. So you owe it to them to make sure that they know your name and that they're going to call you first. And so needless to say, um, that has worked beautifully beautifully these last few years. I've been in my community now five years. Um, <laughs> I took a lot of market share from some people that yes. didn't think market share could ever be taken from and, um, and have been extremely blessed in that. But I want to take it back to what Bob Lacito always says, you know, number one real estate agent in the world, 
next to you. Come on now. Um, but, um, you know, he always says, I get belly to belly with eight people a day and have an intentional conversation about real estate. So if I wake up in the morning and my database isn't looking like, or my I'm getting, I don't want to be on the phone that particular day. It's like, guess what? I'm fixing to go get face to face with at least eight people and have an intentional conversation about real estate. And how many of y'all know that always leads to business? Absolutely. It is a contact business, belly button to belly button. We're not in a real estate business. We're in the lead generation business, right? So I go with the core four. And so myself and my team, by the way, I just recently partnered with uh, Johnny Jennings. He's amazing. Johnny. So um, the core four is number one is, of course, database. We all talked about that. Uh, number two is open houses. Um, right now, there are more people out open houses than uh, ever before. Open houses are huge. We have a whole system for that. And then number three is geographic farming. And part of that geographic farming is hybrid marketing, hybrid farming. And what that is, is that's real similar to circle marketing, circle prospecting, but it's actually going out and knocking on doors. There is a higher ROI. There's a better return right now on knocking on doors than there's ever been in the real estate business. Why? Because no one's doing it. So knocking on doors. And then the fourth is online and outbound marketing. So part of marketing is there's really three things that we all need to remember that are important with marketing. Um, we have to have a great audience and we have to have a great message and we have to have great frequency over and over and over. And I advertise on the radio and with the radio marketing or any type of marketing that you do, even if it's just, you know, videos are huge right now, you always have to have a hook. So there's five things. Number one is you have to have a hook, right? Say the hook first. And then number two is you have to introduce yourself. And then number three is you have to have a story and then you have to have supporting docu supporting market information because there's so much market, there's so much stuff on uh, social media and the radio right now that, I mean, I always say that it does more to terrify than clarify. So you have to know the facts. You have to be the student of the inventory and know the market. And then the last is you have to have call to action. So I have kind of an example for you real quick. So. Good, I was gonna ask you, give us an example of a Here's hook. Here's an example of a hook, right? Okay, hey guys, I thought you're right, I, I bet you thought right now is not a great time to buy with the interest rates so high and people complaining about multiple offer situations. Well, why would you even consider buying a home right now in this market? Well, hi, I'm Tom Daves with EXP Realty, and I've been looking at these stats, and what's really important right now is to know about these market stats is the, there's silver lining for buyers. In fact, right now, the month's worth of supply of inventory is actually going up. The market, the days on market is also actually going up. So right now is actually a better time to buy if you're a buyer, than it's ever been before. So um, now, no, it's not a fun thing to pay a little bit more in interest rate, but if we can get you a better deal on a house, um, and we've been able to help a lot of buyers um, negotiate to get a better deal on a house, you know, I tell a little bit of a story. So um, if we can save you some money on your next home, why wouldn't you want to buy now? So give me a call, Tom Daves, 855 Tom Daves, TomDaves.com. Man, go. came prepared, huh? <laughs> Dropping nuggets, all right. Mr. Russell. So hey, they brought me here because I am the distressed guy. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you heard in Dan's speech, how'd they buy this place? Distress sale. Distress sale, 2010, right? Let me ask you a question. I learned a valuable lesson. I told you I'm really new in real estate, professionally as like an agent broker. Last fall, I learned a lesson. The market absolutely changed, did it not? And then Tom taught me all the Ds. Uh, distressed is one of them, divorce, diamonds, right? Death, yeah. diamonds diapers. diapers. That is the only reason people are selling right now. And I'm a listing agent. I did 80 transactions the last 12 months. I look back, two buys, 78 sales. I only focus on sales. Would you guys like a deal next week? Listing, yes. yeah. right? So that's why I thought we're here, right? Is how do you get a really inexpensive listing next week? I'm gonna teach you two things. 
One, how to get an inexpensive listing next week. Right now, if you pay really close attention, you're going to use Lexi. And by the way, Alexis can fact check me because she is uh, the former star. previous owner of foreclosures.com. So if I get this yes. wrong, she'll, she'll know better than anybody. Yes. Uh, and then I'll teach you how to get long-term business that just keeps coming in, all from distressed. Uh, and then to go back real quick to Tom. Do you guys know how many uh, people will enter the market with every 1% interest rate drop? Did you guys hear that statistic? No. About a half a million. Yeah. So those of you that do work with buyers, tell them, listen, you can wait. And if you wait for it to go from seven and a half to six and a half, you're going to now be competing against 500,000 more people that are going to be looking to buy. So if you can afford to buy now, buy now. But going back to listings, here's what you do. You either go to Property Radar, which is really affordable, or Adam Data, A-T-T-O-M, one of the two. There are a ton of foreclosures. Foreclosures are back to pre-COVID levels. No matter what state you're in, it goes through three processes. Notice of default or something similar. Notice of trustee sale or something similar. And then bank owned. Do you guys all know this? Yeah, hey. I think we, somebody was in my class. Uh, so if you go through those three stages in the state of California, because we're here, it's 111 days. Alexis? 190 and, 11, uh, 90 and 21? 10? Ah, see, my fact checker. 121 days, right? So 100 days for the NOD and then 21 days for the notice of trustee sale. So what you want to do is in like the three counties that I work in the last 90 days, there are over 500 notice of defaults. Wow. So go to property radar or go to Adam data, whichever one that you acquire, pull all of the defaults in your area. You write a very simple letter that's informative. What hap How many people know, I mean, how many houses do you buy in your lifetime? Couple, five. two, three, five, right? One every 10-ish years. How many times have you been in foreclosure? Anybody in here been in foreclosure before? No, a couple people, right? Maybe back in the 2008. So most people have no idea what's going on. They're scared. They're embarrassed. They just want help. Add a value. I have a letter that goes out every week that says, hey, you are in foreclosure. I am here to help. Do not lose your house to the bank. Here is how the process works. Call me for more information. I have helped so many people save their houses for free, but many of them can't save their house and they have to do something with it. So if you pull those 500 homes or so next week, you send out 500 letters, I guarantee you that somebody is gonna reach out to lots of somebody's. Some of them are gonna list to you, with you. Some of them will sell to your investors, I promise. Next Monday, pull all of the counties, contact Lexi or somebody like Lexi at a title company, have them send you over the deeds, find out exactly who those people are and send out letters. Does that make sense? Then long-term, all of my best clients right now are banks. It does take a little longer to get into the REO business, but it is a natural progression. Right now I have in escrow two bank-owned properties, two probates, and then one person that had to sell from a foreclosure. So those are the five that I have in ESCO right now. It's all part of the Ds, right? They had to do something. So I'm telling you, if you go next week, you will get distressed. Once somebody goes all the way through the process and you have the inside track, you've been talking to them, you know what bank they're on, they put their head in the sand, they decided not to sell, you have the immediate contact for that bank. Now the bank owns the property. What are they going to do with it? They want to sell it. They're going to sell it. They're going to list it. They want right? So you know all of the information on that property. Reach out to that bank. You can reverse engineer a trustee's deed. I teach an entire class on it on my YouTube channel. You will be busy forever. Like you will be a busy agent. I know Tom and Don are trying to get me to quit being so busy, but it's hard to, to, to give away the juice, right? The money just, the commissions are great. So that, that is what I would say for my lead generation is distressed properties. I knock on doors I, in the area that's close to me. I mail out to everybody in my three counties that I work the hardest. And then I get REO business because I follow up. All right. So I, we were talking about buyers and, and segue into that. I want to know each of your buyer processes. Yeah, I'll start. I don't have one. I don't do buyers. Okay. <laughs> okay. So our buyer process on the team is, of course, you know, a lot of them come from an open house. So what's your goal at an open house? It's to book one rock solid appointment, right? Just book a freaking appointment, okay? Oh, well, I got 20 names and numbers. I don't give a crap. Did you book an appointment, right? <laughs> so of course, book an appointment. And we changed it from a buyer's consultation to a buyer strategy session. Doesn't that sound a lot better than like, Come on in for a buyer consult. It's a strategy session. So 
Um, meet them, you know, either in the office or at Starbucks. And there's really three pillars to that presentation, to that strategy session. Number one is a needs analysis. You know, ask questions. They don't care how much you care. They don't care how much you know until how much you care, right? So ask questions. Great. What's your timing? You know, what are you looking for? If you can find the perfect home, what's your timing? You guys know all the questions, so ask all of the questions. Number two is value proposition. Share your value proposition. And for us on our team, it's the buyer plan of action, okay? So on our buyer plan of action, anyone can pull up homes on the MLS or search Zillow or whatever, but we go above and beyond and we have a buyer plan of action. Not only do we search all of the MLS and the Zillow and the online, but we also go above and beyond. You know, once we identify what area they want, we call through the neighborhood. We door knock through the neighborhood. We check all of the expireds in the neighborhood. We have off market properties. We check foreclosures. I call Russ. Hey, what's happening in this neighborhood? And we also have a pipeline of many, many people in our database. So we go above and beyond to really provide value for them. So we really can make, make a difference. So the first is again, what was the first one? <laughs> yeah, he's actually <laughs> testing you. Are you taking notes? What's the first one? Right. Needs analysis. What's the second one? Value okay, we're on. So value that's proposition. Right. Number three. Number three. Need, okay, needs analysis, value proposition. Thank you. And then the third one is get them to sign the contract. Just have them sign the agreement, right? So, and then expectations, you know, these are the expectations. So that's kind of our deal. Thanks. Well, and by the way, 45 years in the business and I failed to mention uh, number one in the world, realtor in the world for Keller Williams, not once, not twice, not six, but seven times. So I think he knows a few things about what he's talking about. Right? <laughs> And I do the exact opposite. So I have no desire to do a buyer consultation. The only consultation I want to do with a buyer is how much are we putting down and let's go home so we can get this written up today. And so my goal is to get them into a property that they will potentially want to buy as quickly as possible. My secret sauce is I know how to very quickly get to the motivation of a buyer to determine timing and to be able to get them to move. If they're not moving, if they're not moving today, I don't know why I'm having a conversation with them right now. That's, that's not my buyer. And so, okay, um, walk us through that a little bit. Like actually, what do you do to get them to that point? Cause Lex, you're taking so, it from a lead okay, so to now we're going to get Lexi, the car you want to role play real today? quick. Okay. So here we go. So you just, I just, let's just pretend like I got yeah. a lead. And so I'm calling you. I'm a Lexi. Hey girl, this is Deb. How are you? Hey, listen, I just saw you came in on 123 Main Street. That is so stinking cute. You've been looking for a while? Oh, yeah, just a few minutes, but we haven't really done anything to like it. So you've been looking. Okay, okay. So um, have you been walking in any doors, or what's been going on with that? Well, you know, we've gone to several open houses, and we've gone to, like, some, a few new homes and stuff, but we just, we have something specific that we're looking for, so that Okay, well, talk to me about that, because I'm seeing 123 Main Street, and talk to me about that. So it needs to be like a single story. Um, Let's see. Um, it has to be no no less than four bedrooms. I want a three car garage. Blah blah I blah. Want, and so that's all good. That is absolutely yeah, fabulous. You know what's so funny, Lexi? Is you're telling me these things. I love one two three Main Street. I've actually got another property I think might fit you even better. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No wait. Ho no, talk to me a minute. What did you say your budget was again? Oh, uh, six fifty. Six fifty. Okay. And so and you have an absolutely rock star lender right now. Well, I think they're a rock star. Okay. Now, are you good friends? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all are? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he's going to get that, you... Is that bad? Well, he's gonna, is he going to get you 5%? Well, I don't know. Well, the only reason I say that is sometimes it's good to shop lenders because I want control of this deal. Do you guys okay. understand me? Okay. So it's always good to shop lenders. And so I may just put you in touch with, you know my preferred lender and okay. just see, see what he can do for you. Now, obviously that'll also inspire your lender to meet it or beat it. Right. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's, that, that's going to be great. So anyway, so you've already got that prequal letter. So I'm excited about that. Okay. Now, listen to me, Lexi, if I showed you something that was just a hair above your budget, do you think that'd be something you might want to move on? If it was perfect. How far above my budget? Well, I'm, I'm going to keep you comfortable. I'm gonna keep you comfortable. Say six seventy five, maybe seven. 
maybe. Yeah, I might be open to that. If I could, if I could rock your world at seven. As long as I could afford the payments. Well, no, we'll make sure of that. Don't you worry about okay. that. We're going to take care of all okay. that. Okay. And so you said you want to see that tomorrow, right? Um, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So what's three o'clock look like for you? Uh, that, well, four o'clock would be better. Four o'clock is better. And so, and is the family coming? Yes, they are. Okay. Yes. So let's make sure they're all there too. Now, listen to me. If we, if we walk in, if I show you a house tomorrow, we're going to go see one, two, three main street and get it super cute. But if I walk you in a house that you absolutely love tomorrow and you get chills from head to toe, are you going to be ready to move on it then? Uh, yeah, I'd be ready to go. Okay. Well, I'm excited then. Well, I cannot wait to meet you. I love that just being on this journey with you. I'm telling you what sister, but it's going to be a quick journey. So you get ready. Cause I'm telling you, I already know your house. This is so great. Okay. I'll look forward to seeing you then watch for my text message. We'll be following up soon. Click. I'm done. Do you see what I'm saying? So I have just made it, a she's best basically friend. We're going to buy a house, her, right? You're leading her down the path, right? Yeah, Cause she I'm, wants to buy a house. She just doesn't, sometimes they kind of slow down cause they're like, it maybe feels like it's going a little fast. I don't know. And, and so like, and no, what was my okay. value proposition? I got and not, you. but so what were my, I, I dropped two value propositions in there. That's going to make her not go with whatever agent has opened a couple doors. Cause you notice I didn't ask her if she's working with a real estate agent. I don't care. She would not be on the phone with me if she was working with a real estate agent. And it's just that simple. Let's see so, if they got it. Name one. Interest, interest rate. rate. Thank you. My secret sauce lender is going to get her good interest rate. Okay. What was the second what value was proposition? Two? Huh? I have a secret property. Yeah. And do I have any idea what that secret property is at that moment when I'm having that conversation? Heck no. I have no idea, but I'm going to find it. <laughs> it's going to be under 700. She's like, I got to go find the secret property. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you for doing that. Was that helpful? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll go off of the open house buyer uh, because we're getting a lot of buyers. So outside of referral relationship and reputation are people that we have not met before are coming from open houses. I'm just going to say it. We're, we're stealing a lot of people from other agents sure. at open houses. <laughs> sure. And, and one of the things that we do uh, on top of everything that everyone mentioned here is we have a list of comps similar properties that are similar to the open house that we're doing when they walk in the door, if they say they're already working with a lender and or already working with a realtor, we actually don't, we try not to let them even get to that point because we're saying, are you committed to a realtor that is finding great properties for you? They're going to question that. Well, am I committed? And are they finding great properties for me? Like, well, somebody showed me a couple of houses, right? That doesn't mean that you have a realtor. One thing that we're doing when they walk into the open house is, since you said you already have a realtor, I'm sure you're already familiar with all of these other properties and we've got that list right there of similar homes in the area. And they're gonna look at you and be like, I haven't seen those. It, they're not secret, they're all on the MLS. <laughs> and they haven't even seen those. So we know that their realtor is not doing a good job for them. And another thing that we ask them is, what was it about this property that had your interest, sparked your interest? What was it about this property that made you walk into the open house today? What was it about this property that made you message me on Facebook and ask me to take a look at it? And why is that important to you? So everything that they're saying, we're following up with, and why is that important to you? What about that is important to you? So we're identifying, now we're hearing, what are the life events? Well, because we're about to have a baby, because we're relocating. My husband took a job over in this area, and he's driving an hour for work. So now we're finding out what's important. We want something with RV parking. That's something I hear in my area all the time. Now I'm able to get in conversation with them about their lifestyle. And once you've showed that you cared about their lifestyle, how they live and what's important to them, then they're more likely to want to work with you. But that's, um, that's our key is, I'm sure you've already seen these properties or you must already know about this or that or the other. You must already know about the two one buy down or other options. And they will look at you like they have never heard of it. 99% of people that walk in the door have never heard of those things. Awesome. Uh, one thing on the list when you do open houses, if you don't already do this, you can, and Brent actually did this for years, is you print a list of vacant homes, right? Vacant homes and um, second owners, right? Or just vacant homes. And so you have a hot list of vacant homes and the, you know, kind of circling around your open house. And when they walk in, you say, hey, you know, I got a list of hot 
home. You don't tell them they're vacant. They just say, hey, these are very motivated buyers because there's a vacant home. It's not rented. They're not getting rent coming in, right? They, they're not living there. So they got another house that they're at. So they're paying multiple payments, right? And so they're, they are motivated to get that thing sold. So um, you, if they're a hot buyer to go right then, sometimes you close up the open house and you go, hey, I'll take you over there right now and just put a sign, you know, gone fishing or whatever. No, I'll be back or what have you, right? Shut it down. Maybe that's the buyer you got. Uh, the other thing is you can send them out and say, hey, get their information and then I'll follow up with you once I finish up with the open house. But why don't you go ahead and drive by about four or five of these, go in the backyard. You know, it's okay. If anybody stops you or asks you, just tell them, you know, Brent Gove sent you and so on, right? Because he, he was the agent doing the open house, right? Because they're vacant. So you can go peek in the windows and go in the backyard and do those sort of things. And they go, wow, you can do that. And you can give them some agent repellent, give them your cards, right? Just say, if anybody questions, just give them some of my cards. You're working with me. So they're already kind of subconsciously starting to work with you now because you gave them value of hot properties. These are all people motivated, ready to go now. And I'm sure we'll be able to find one in there that uh, you, know, you may really like. But go take a look. I'm going to finish up here and we'll circle back around. Go ahead. Cool. Thank you. Um, I think a key that makes me successful with buyers is um, speed to the lead. So my biggest goal is meeting with them as quick as I can. Before I meet them, I try to write, I try to ask the right questions. So I don't necessarily want to meet with people that aren't pre-qualified. If they're not pre-qualified, I ask the right questions to know very quickly if they'll be pre-qualified or not. And then I will try to set up a time that day or the next day to meet them with at, at the property. Um, a lot of times if they're not qualified, I still will meet them at the property, but I have pre-qualified them in, their, in my mind. I've been burnt a couple of times, but 90, 95% of the time, they usually will get pre-qualified and it works out. So that, that's my, that's my uh, big thing is I'm just so quick to meet them at a property. Um, typically the buyers right now are more serious because with the interest rates they, they are needing to, to buy, and um, it's just buyers are emotional, so let's ride the emotions and let's get them in a get them in a house. Awesome. Okay, so yes, go ahead, please. I just want to add something. We all know about the litigation that's going on and the lawsuits that are pending as it relates to buyer agency and things like that. So the only thing that I want to say is that at this point, no, I do not do a buyer presentation or anything like that. But I can promise you I'm going to be taking some tips from this man when it comes to that because every single one of us are going to want to make sure that we have a rock-solid buyer commission agreement signed before we go open a door. None of us has time. We are busy. We run busy lives. We are taking care of our people. We need to make sure that our agents understand this and we understand this. So we're in the process right now of actually brainstorming some different ways that you can get that buyer commission paid if, when, and then that lawsuit does come to fruition and begins to impact us out here. And so once that training is available, I'll make sure that it gets out to the group. All right. All right, Hadley. So uh, we're running a little tight on time, but I want to get into the aspect of listings and sellers. And so um, a couple questions I have is the following. A lot of times people don't talk about or don't share, what does it look like when you're at the table, at, you know, in a listing appointment? You're at the dining room table, the kitchen table or whatever. What are you saying? What are you doing? What are you going through? Because a lot of times in these panels, we talk about lead generation, this and that, open house, and they're like, okay, I got it. But like, no one's ever showed me what to say or what to do or what the focus is when I'm in front of a, a seller. And really listings, if you want to last in this business, you need to list. So maybe you could go into some of that, some of your, um, and then I'll combine it with this. What's one thing you tell your seller that differentiates you from all of the realtors? They say, hey, Hadley, glad you showed up. You know, we got three other realtors behind you, so give it your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as the listing presentation goes, um, I'm in the middle of refining it because I've noticed that I've been getting, um, I'm really good with buyers, uh, with listings. Um, being somewhat newer in the business is now something I'm starting to focus on. And so I've actually enrolled in a course called reverse selling and they teach all of this guy, uh, his name is Brandon Mullerin and he has an awesome listing, listing presentation. He also teaches you how to build your resume. And so it's honestly something I worked on because I just go off of, uh, charisma, building rapport, like let's get your home listed. But then I notice I shoot myself in the foot because I'm, I'm overpriced and I'm looking like an idiot where uh, the CMAs are, you know, 
you got to have good pricing, especially mm -hmm. now to move the home. And you don't want to, you don't want to create more work than you have to. Yeah. So I notice now it's a skill-based market. I, hell, I was starting in the bull run. I listed anything and it sold. And now I'm realizing let's, let's, uh, let's tone it in a little bit because I've, I've been noticing that's a little bit of weak spot in my business. So I, I'm going to start sending out resumes to potential, uh, listing appointments mm -hmm. as well as a great CMA presentation while I'm there, let the comps do most of the talking so that we can set on a good price of the, does, the house doesn't sit there for two or three months and then just creates unnecessary stress on us as the agents, as well as the, the sellers. So uh, that's something I'm working on Matt. How much did you do last month? Four million. Oh, wow. Okay, so that working on it, that working on it's doing pretty good. There's a lesson. He hired this, right? There's a lesson. Here's a guy doing 60 plus units a year and I need to get better. It's like Tiger Woods, he'd won three majors in a row and he's like, nope, I gotta change my swing, I gotta get better. So don't rest on your laurels. You always got to get better. And it is a skilled based market now. And if you've been in the business in the last five or six years, you've been more order taker as opposed to having the skills of really being able to compete against two or three or four agents that are stacked up that these sellers uh, are, you know, interviewing. So appreciate your transparency and honesty there, man. That's awesome. I ask a lot of questions. So I start off with really understanding why they're wanting to make a move, what has prompted the move. And that's changed from the last few years to now. So in the past few years, the conversation was, the listing presentation was actually more about what they were excited to move into. Mm. Because we were getting a lot of people that were moving, um, somebody said to me the other day, they'd move just because they didn't like the color of the house. <laughs> so they'd go, you know, I'm gonna go buy a a gray house instead of a tan house. So okay. <laughs> it was just that easy to move yeah. in the last few years until the interest rates went up. So people were moving because they were excited about what the next step was, what their life was going to look like in the new home. So I focus a lot on that. I mean, I, I have my, this is how many homes I sold in the area. Here, here's some testimonials from past clients. I have video testimonials. So they receive that. They receive videos of me in the community. That's ahead of time. To, yeah. Before you yeah. arrive? When they, when they schedule the appointment, I put it on my calendar. I send uh -huh. them a calendar invite, and then they receive a link to some of the around the town type videos and um, property tours that I've done in the past. So they feel like they know me. So credibility, kind of celebrity status in a sense. Yeah. That's what happens with video and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So they automatically have trust right. and rapport before they even meet you in person. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on selling myself because they yeah. know a lot about me already. Uh, we go through the marketing plan and uh, oftentimes when I know I'm competing with someone else, I will say a lot of things like, well, you said you met with another realtor, so I'm sure you've heard some of this before because yeah. I know that they have it. Yes. <laughs> because I know that realtors are lazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> my, my competition is lazy. So I know that they aren't doing the things that I'm doing. So that's a big part of the marketing plan is I'm sure you've heard this or, you know, stop me if you've heard this already. Stop me if someone else told me this. And when I know that I'm coming in behind someone else, I'll ask them, what was it that that realtor did that you liked? And what was it that you didn't like? Because obviously I'm here. So there was something that you were missing out of that appointment, which is why you still wanted to meet with me. Um, but when I'm hearing about what's important to them, now when we're in a different market, people aren't moving just for fun. It's more of a have to. Mm -hmm. So now I'm really getting into the emotions of what has triggered their move? Why do they need to sell? Maybe it's, maybe it's mom's house and she passed away. Just really showing a lot of compassion and building a relationship with them. That's standing out a lot more than here's my marketing plan. I mean, of course we go over that, but that's not where we spend most of the time. Okay. What, my soul real quick, sister. real quick, real quick. Yeah. What would be the one thing that you would tell sellers that differentiate you from the others? Is there something that you say that was kind of your secret sauce or what have you where they go? Oh, yeah. Well, it changes because I'll ask them, what was it that you liked or didn't like about somebody else that you met with when I'm competing? And then I just use that and I say that about 10 times. Got <laughs> it. That's it. <laughs> I'm 10 times better than that. So whatever it was that you liked, you liked that they did drone photos. My drone photos are 10 times yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> 
so that's what separates me, but they, they usually feel so emotionally connected to me by the time that we're done with the appointment that that's never in question. Do they, um, do you get many at the end of your listing appointment where they're questioning you on price in regards to not the list price, oh. but your price, uh, commissions sure. and so on? So I do not, I don't never, but at all costs, I will not talk about the list price sure. at the listing appointment. And even when they want to push me to it, I mean, we'll look at comps, we'll look at what things they can do or not do to improve the value. We'll go through all of that. But if they say, what are you going to sell my house for? I will not answer that question because I've had too many times where they list with somebody else because, oh, well, he said he'd sell it for $25,000 yes. more than you said he would sell it for. So, and I've combated that with saying, we're not going to decide on a price right now. First of all, because the market's really volatile. So we cannot determine, you know, it could be 90 days by the time you finish these projects and have your house ready to go on the market. So we're going to evaluate it at that time. Uh, but then I'm also telling them the, the purpose of this meeting here isn't to decide the price of your home because ultimately the market will decide the price. The marketing will get the market here. So the purpose of this meeting is for you to feel so comfortable and so confident in my abilities to do the best job for you that you know you're going to get the best price. That's right. And I think the key focus Amen. that I found as well is the aspect of you're hiring an expert marketer. If you're here wanting a realtor to tell you price, you're, and, and if you're gonna hire a realtor off price, you're, you're not gonna get the best realtor, quite frankly. What you are looking for is you need to hire an expert marketer, a, a marketing genius, a marketing guru, right? We're, and I don't go into price, uh, determine a price, I do a range. And we'll go through the comps together. I'll actually talk them through it and they'll, we'll do it. I go, we're going to go through this together. And I put it on them. I go, okay, after going through all this, what do you think that the home, your home actually should sell for in this tough market today? And I throw in that it's a tough market and so on. And it's amazing how, you, you know, I maybe would suggest $7.99 potentially thinking that's what they're going to say. And then they'll come in and they're like, yeah, I think probably $7.50. In fact, we just had that on one we went on. And uh, I go, well, it is a tough market and it is trending downward and so on. So yeah, you do need to aggressively price it and so forth. So, um, but we don't identify price at that point because like she said, there's projects, you got to get the house ready. You got to get staged. You're not going to take photography unless it is really dolled up and looking good. You're not going to do the, you know, videography and all that. So that buys you some time to go ahead and uh, determine price later, do a market analysis before you go live. Deb Britton. There's been so much valuable stuff already shared. You're my soul sister in so many ways, except you're more refined. And so anyway, um, I don't do listing presentations. I, again, I said all my credibility on the front end. I used to do the whole two hour presentation. Oh, no, thank you. And then when I moved and I was still in my Louisiana market, I still had to communicate all that information and be able to get the, to convert. Right. So I created a six minute video, six minutes. And six minutes sold better than me in their house for two hours. And I was like, well, duh, I'm not doing that anymore. So anyway, so um, I send all my stuff on the front end. They've got my credibility. They've got everything 95% of the time. I'm not competing with anybody. This is the buyer that I've just put an offer in for. And so we're all, now we're going to get your house sold. And we're going to be getting it on the market immediately. You know what I mean? So now you're going to do everything I tell you to do as quickly as I tell you to do it and how I tell you to do it, right? Right, right. So I've already created that, laid that foundation. Now, one thing, just to kind of piggyback on the price thing, you know, they're like, okay, well, you know, my, my first question to them is, well, okay, so what do you want? Because, you know, well, we don't know. Well, what do you think? No, uh-uh. What do you want? Because you know you have a number in your head. So just give me that number, and then we're going to talk about whether or not that's real or not. And so I get their number. You've got to uncover that number. We all know that. So we've uncovered the number. Now I'm going in, and then, well, what do you think we should price it at? Uh-uh, no, not a chance. I'm going I'm to teach you. And then you're going to price your home. So that when you call me up and you're like, why my home didn't sell, I'm going to be like, well, because you priced it wrong. Because there's only three keys, price, presentation, and positioning in the market. That's it. If it's not selling, it's one of those three. I'm going to make sure that it's presented into the market. I'm going to make sure that it's positioned correctly. And you're the one doing the price. So how much of the time do you think that they defer to what price when they look at me and they go, well, you know, I don't know, uh, six forty nine. dollars what do you think? You know what? I, I think that's fair. I think I think I could go along with that. I think th I think you've done very well on this assignment. Thank you very much. Whatever. But anyway, so again, 
Bottom line is I'm now affirming whatever decision they made. Well, 700, Deb, you know, that's really what we want. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. I thought you said you wanted to sell your house. So I'm going to make them feel a little stupid. I do that. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. All right. It's on days. <laughs> so the listening presentation really starts with that first initial call with the needs analysis again, right? So you obviously just want to ask them, you know, say, great. Thanks for calling. What's your timing? You know, where are you thinking about moving to? And um, do you have a ballpark idea? You know, how much you feel your home is worth? What always cracks me up about that question is they always say, we have no idea how much it's worth. Yeah, right? Yeah, right. And then um, they say, well, you tell me. And I said, well, I'll do my research. But, you know, do you have a ballpark idea? And they say, no, we're not sure. So I just pull up my phone. I go, well, you know, Zillow says 650000 What do you think about Zillow? Oh, no, it's worth at least six seventy. you know. <laughs> Two seconds ago, they had no idea. But <laughs> so, so true. You want, and then also, you, you want to make sure that you don't get spoused. Have any of you gotten spoused? You know, <laughs> you want to say, oh, great. Well, your I wife be there. Both wife. decision makers be there. Um, and then when you get to the appointment, um, first thing I say when I walk in, great, um, who wants to give me the grand tour? You know what that will tell you is it will tell you who wears the pants. Because if she says, honey, I'll go show the house, you know, she wears the pants. If oh, she says, good. honey, you go show them the house, that's good. you know, she wears the pants, right? <laughs> so I go, <laughs> go through the house, um, create the rapport, and then sit down, you know, at the table. Don't sit in the conversation pit. And then again, the needs analysis. Ask them the questions. What's your timing? Where are you going? Which, uh, where are you moving to? Um, what qualities are you looking for in a realtor? Listen to that because you're going to want to weave that into your uh, presentation. And then also, when was the last home? That you, when was the last time you sold a home? Oh, 10 years ago. How was that experience? And they'll say, oh, it was terrible. Whatever. You want to listen to that as well. And then, um, again, what qualities are you looking for? The price. And then um, from there, just go into um, our marketing, our value proposition, um, how we can help them and serve them, um, our history, you know, all of the, you know, yeah. pull out the tablet. Yes, I'm old, but I still have a laptop tablet. Go through all the marketing and share with them what we can do and how we really differentiate ourselves. And then just close. A lot of times, as soon as I, I show a video right there at the end because I advertise on the TV and the radio, I have like either Barbara Corcoran or Christina Mendonca, and I say, you know, wait, let me get your opinion on some recent marketing that we did. And so I show that video. Great. What do you think of that marketing? Like, oh, it's good. So can we get the paperwork started and get you sold, get it sold, get you moved to Walla Walla, Washington? And then nine times out of 10, they'll just move forward and do it. No, we want to think about it. We want to talk to other agents. Um, I'm sorry, on that first call, you want to find out if they are talking to other agents. So you can do some sleuthing and find out. Um, what they're doing or not doing. And then, um, great, well, no problem, because you can cancel at any time. Why don't we get the paperwork started now? And then that way, when you are ready to put it on the market, or if you do decide uh, to go another direction, we'll cancel this listing. But let's get it started today, okay? There you go. And if it. they get into the commission, oh, yeah, well, Johnny said that he would charge, you know, 4.5%. Yeah, well, I'm sure that you can, you know, just like... When you go to a hotel, you can go to Motel 6 and they'll leave a light on, or you can go to the Ritz-Carlton and they'll fold back your covers and leave a chocolate and know your first name, right? Don't you want to get the highest and best price for your home? And then um, our UVP, Unique Value Proposition, because, I mean, isn't it crazy? You go through all of your marketing. We spend half a million dollars a year. We do all of this, and then they're like, yeah, but so what do you do different? Are you kidding me? So I just say, well, you know, this is kind of my elevator is number one is we do more and better marketing. No one markets as well as us. Don't you feel that's important? Oh, yeah, marketing. Number two is we, we are better negotiators. No one negotiates better on your behalf than us. And then number three, we just have the ability to get the job done. 
so we can successfully get you to Walla Walla, Washington. Isn't that important? Boom. There you so go. one final thing, and I picked up this from uh, Brian Buffini. When I walk out of the house um, with that, if you don't get that listing signed right there, you know what your chances are to get it signed eventually? Even they say, oh, I'll call you tomorrow. I'll sign tomorrow. What are the odds of them getting that listing? 50%. If you walk out that door without that listing, you have a 50% chance. So let's get it signed. But once I get it signed and then I walk out the door, it's just kind of an additional confidence thing to share with them. I'm walking out the door and I'm going over here. Well, thank you so much. So excited. And then I turn around and I go, you know what? This home will sell. This home will sell. And then they go, really? <laughs> will it really? Yeah. That is a Brian Yeah, for the right thing. price, right? That is so Brian Feeney. But I say it That's every good. time. They go, really? Oh, oh, thank you. That's good. That's awesome. Okay, All right. I know, I know Bring getting... us home, Russell. I know we're running a little low on time, but this is really good stuff. Is this the last one or are we? You're the last one, yeah. I'm between them and dinner? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> we got another rock star speaker. Oh, okay, All right. Up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so all I do is cold listings um, other than my REOs. So I do, a, I've had a lot of mistakes I've made. And I did a lot of studying. NAR says there's top two reasons. You know somebody. If you have a best friend that's a real estate agent and you don't list with them, are you in trouble? Right? So my number one goal when I go into a house is that person is going to be my best friend before I leave. That's my number one goal. The second reason that they list with somebody is they're a local area expert. So I don't ever go to a listing where I don't know everything that has sold in the last six months and I can speak to it like it was my house, right? And then, uh, you know, we go through a lot. I, I have them take me through the house, same thing, you tour. I don't want to cover what these guys have always toured, uh, covered already. But if you don't, if you're not their best friend and you're not a local area expert, you're not going to get the listing. I do go through a little bit uh, more where, you know, what is the difference between you and everybody else? I'm a flipper, so I've sold well over 100 of my own homes. So one of the sales pitches I give is once they like me and once they know I'm a local area expert, I say, hey, listen, I'm going to treat this home just like it was my own. I have made a ton of mistakes, right? And I'm not going to make the same mistakes on your home I made on my home. I'm going to make sure that we maximize value. There's three hurdles in the state of California when you get a home listed and you're in contract. After I've already marketed it correctly, we've got the highest price. There's still three hurdles, right? You guys know the three contingencies that you have to get over? Do those cost you money? Yes. A lot of times, right? They cost you money. I said, if you have other agents that you've talked to that haven't talked about those hurdles, then you're in, you know, deep, right? Number one, uh, you got to make sure that it appraises. I was in lending for 16 years. Humans are lazy. I will put an entire appraisal package together for the lender I know they can use. That brings your price, your house in at value. Out of the 78 that I sold last year, I missed twice. Did an appraisal package on all of them right? Don't miss. Don't miss the appraisal. They allowed to ask for repairs. Again, I flipped over a hundred houses. I know exactly what they're going to ask for. Let's take care of some of the stuff ahead of time. And then let's make sure, make sure that when we go into contract, they know we're not going to take care of the other stuff. It's not going to cost you any money, right? What's the third one? The loan. I call and I make sure that that loan is fully desk underwritten before we get into contract with these people. If I'm talking to some Yahoo lender that has no idea what's going on, hasn't even run credit or no way. We're not going to get involved with those people. So I try to make sure that they understand I've sold a ton myself. I've made a ton of mistakes. It's not going to happen to you. We're going to make you the most amount of money. But if you are not their best friend and you're not an area expert, you're going to miss. I love it. Hey, I want everybody to stand up, move around a bit. That was a long session. All right.